Well, he is risen. He is risen indeed. That's right. Hey, you guys know the rules for uh, drive-in church. It's so good to see you this Easter morning as we've gathered to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We just rejoice in what this season means, what this day represents. And so it's good that we can gather and do so very safely. And again, just to remind you, this does comply with the, what's going on with COVID-19. As long as you stay in your cars and keep the windows rolled up. So I know you'll probably have to turn your car on every so often, but that, that's okay. But again, tune to 88.9. Hopefully you can uh, hear that uh, last week. I know we had some issues with that, so we changed the uh, frequency to 88.9. But again, it's wonderful to see you this morning. Again, wish we could fellowship as normal, but you guys know exactly why we can't. And so we're just going to make the best of it. And we're going to just rejoice in what we're doing. Uh, the music you just heard, that was uh, Mark Hamilton. Brother Mark Hamilton was playing that, and so we're grateful he was able to uh, minister in music that way to you. So hopefully you were listening to that. But this time I'm going to turn it over uh, inside to Karen, and she's going to lead us in worship. Uh, Karen and Kathy and Pat will be singing. Uh, so let's just worship the Lord at this time. Amen. Amen. I tell you, it's a wonderful time, again, to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you tuned in to the Good Friday service on uh, this past Friday, obviously, I mentioned searching for the cross. And I had gone looking around. And I don't know if you can see it here behind me. Hopefully it's high enough. You can see that. Found the cross. Of course, it's always what? In the last place you look. But uh, grateful to find that. And as you see, it has the, the white fabric on it, which represents it. Guess what? Jesus is no longer on the cross, but also, guess what? He's no longer in the grave. And that's why we rejoice in this day, and that's why we have hope. Regardless of what takes place in this culture, in this world, it doesn't matter because Jesus is alive. He's on his throne. He's here today as we have gathered as the body of Christ. And so, again, just glad we have this opportunity. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you, Lord, and praise you for this time together. Thank you for what this day represents, a day of hope, Lord, a day of victory, the victory that is in Christ and in Christ alone. So, Lord, today may we just share in that victory. Lord, for those that uh, have embraced uh, your love and your mercy, Lord, we just rejoice today. And if, Lord, if there's anyone here today the sound of my voice who's never trusted Christ. May today be the day of salvation. May today be the day when they see the beauty of the cross. So, Father, I thank you, and I pray that you would be with those families that grieve and mourn. Lord, they have lost loved ones due to this COVID-19. Lord, again, we continue to lift up those people who are in uh, the front lines dealing with this pandemic. But, Lord, we also pray for the day-in and day-out trials of life. And those things have gotten even harder because of what we're having to go through. Father, be with those families that need your comfort right now. Strengthen and bless them, Father, to, to know of your presence and your power. Father, we thank you, and Lord, we love you that we can gather in worship. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Well, at this time, we'll turn it back inside. We'll have a, another time of music and then after that uh, just a brief message because I know sitting in the cars is not ideal but we do want to take this time to proclaim the glory of Jesus.
You know, this uh, Easter is not your typical Easter, is it? But I'm glad you guys have shown up for something that's out of the ordinary. And you know what? That first Sunday, many years ago, something out of the ordinary happened. Jesus rose from the, from the grave, defeated death once and for all. And, and that's what it's really all about. But I realize it's kind of the way things have gone here the past several weeks in our nation, in our country, and even around here, it's, it's kind of messed a lot of things up. I mean, it's messed Easter up for a lot of folks because normally it's Easter egg hunts and so much candy and all those kinds of things. Maybe for some folks it's going out and buying that brand new outfit so you can show that off. And uh, unless you're buying it online, you can't go to the store to, to buy a brand new outfit. Family get-togethers are kind of limited as well, unless you're going to do it through some kind of teleconferencing or something like that. And, you know, one of the other things that's kind of missing was sunrise services. Uh, I know there's some churches around that did those. Uh, my hometown, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, they have a sunrise service that's been going on for 248 years. Think about that. 248 years they've had a sunrise service. And so I got up this morning, and they were live streaming it, uh, although it was very uh, muted. Only 10 people were there. But you know what? They carried on. And you know what? We're carrying on as well because... The gospel demands it. The gospel strengthens us to move forward regardless of what adversity we may face. But this may be a good time for us to truly look at what is the essence of the gospel. What is the essence of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ? In 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, Paul says that of first importance, he says the thing that is most crucial to understand is that Jesus died according to the scriptures, was buried, and on the third day rose again according to the scriptures. That is the essence of the gospel. And so over the past couple weeks, we have looked at Jesus was crucified, which means he was really dead. And Jesus was buried. He was actually placed in a tomb. But on the first day of the week, when those women came early in the morning, guess what they found? They found an empty grave, and it has made all the difference in the world. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, verse 1. And let me just read that, and let's let the Lord bless this time we spent together. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards, I like this, and the guards shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he is risen indeed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray you would take this word, write it upon our hearts. Show us, Lord, what we need to understand so that we can deal with the issues that we face here and now. But Lord, let us also prepare for all eternity. So Father, thank you. We praise you. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. And God's people said, amen. Amen. Okay, I got, I got that horn. All right, now wait a minute. We're going to save the horns for the end, okay? We don't want people breaking us up too soon. But if you want to praise the Lord or something, turn on your flashers, okay? Or turn on your high beams, do something like that. If you like what I'm saying, you can give me an amen with some left turns, right turns. If you're raising both hands, do, do emerge hazard lights or something like that. So we're just going to, I say, okay, we'll get some lights going here. But just a brief message from God's Word to encourage us. Notice what happens here. Jesus dies not for himself or for his sin, but for the sin of the world. Have you ever thought about the fact that at Passover, they celebrated the deliverance of the people? That tenth plague that took place was the death of the firstborn, and those that were obedient to the command of the Lord to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the Lord passed by, right? But those that were not obedient, the firstborn died. And it was through that plague, through God's victory, that he delivered his people. And think of the horrifying events of Good Friday. The firstborn, or the, not, uh, the unique Son of God, was crucified. But not for his sin, not for his disobedience, but for 
our disobedience. And because of that, we are delivered from our sin. How should we respond to the resurrection of Jesus? What should be our takeaway this day? Let's let it be the same takeaway that the, these women had who came to the tomb early in the morning. The angel told them, remember they're afraid and they're not really sure what's going on. The angel tells them, verse 6, He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Come and see. We are invited to come and see from the Lord what he is doing. You know, in our day and time, the church has fallen into this trap that for people to get saved, they got to come see what we're doing. They got to come see to the church. They got to come see this event. They got to come see this ministry or what have you. And I think we've lost some of what that, what is actually being told us right here. Because right now, we're, we can't tell people come and see unless we say, hey, come to our website. <laughs> Hey, come, come watch us online or something like that, which is perfectly okay. We want people to do that. And we want people to come see. We want them to see what we're doing here. We want them to come see the fellowship that we have and that we enjoy. We want to do those things. But what is this angel telling these women, these first eyewitnesses to the resurrection of Jesus? It says, come and see. They're saying, look at the evidence. Come, come and see. Come, come here and see it for yourself. This isn't some fairy tale. This isn't some made up myth, which is so much of what the world wants to tell us now. This is actual history. This took place, I mentioned that last week. There was an actual tomb that you could put on a map somewhere if we knew exactly where it was. We could put it on the map and we could go to it just like those women went that first day. But this come and see, and I think about Thomas. Remember Thomas didn't get to see Jesus when he was first resurrected he says unless I can what touches put my fingers in the nail marks I won't believe it he finally sees Jesus John chapter 20 and he tells him Thomas no longer be unbelieving but what come basically he's telling what come and see we want people to experience the reality of Jesus Christ and if we want people to experience the reality of Jesus we must experience the reality of Jesus Christ so that we can say, hey, come and see. Come, come look at my life. I'm not perfect by any means, but you know, I'm doing what the Lord has told me to do. I'm trying my best to follow his commands very humbly. We want people to come and see. So we need to say that for the resurrection. Tell people, examine this for yourself. It is true. Again, it's not a fairy tale or a myth. It is actual truth. And it is the truth that we must have and understand. But what else should be our response? To just come and see, come and examine. We should go and tell. Notice that's the first thing this angel tells these first eyewitnesses. And he says, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. <coughs> Excuse me. He is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' words. Wow. Go and tell. You know, a lot of school kids would come to school on certain days and they'd have what? Show and tell, right? I wonder how they're doing that with Zoom call. I wonder how many kids are saying, hey, here's my house. Here's this, you know, showing stuff off as... They're having to meet online as a class now. But you know, go and tell. Not only do we show it with our life, but we're to go, we're to tell others the good news. In fact, this is repeated twice, just to make sure we don't miss it. Let me read on here. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The angel told him, go and tell. Jesus said, go and tell. What do you think we're supposed to do? <laughs> go and tell. I mean, that's what he's uh, gifted us. That's what he's empowered us to do, is to go and to tell the great good news of Jesus, to tell that this tomb is empty. 
you know, a lot of people are discouraged in the world right now. A lot of people are living without hope. But we have this hope, and this hope is sure. This hope is eternal. Because if Jesus can defeat death, who can stop him? And if he can do that, who can separate us from his love? As it tells us in Romans 8, nothing can ever separate us from his love. So be encouraged, church. There's going to come a time when we get to, to get together again. And I am looking forward to that. Going to be some high fives and some hugs, okay? I, I'm ready for it. But in due time, we, we have to wait. But we need to persevere and keep going. And so what do we do? Come and see. Let's examine this again. Be refreshed by the gospel. Go and tell because of this great good news. And I want to leave you with this thought is, what are you doing with the empty tomb? What are you doing with the empty tomb? You know, Good Friday, I said, searching for the cross. You know, you're going to find your answers in the cross. And the reason we can find our answers in the cross is because the tomb is empty. But what are you doing with the tomb, with that empty tomb? Let's read on a little bit in verse 11, then we'll be done. It says, Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest and all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. I think it's interesting. The first eyewitnesses to the empty tomb obviously were these women. And they went to go and tell. The soldiers saw the empty tomb. They saw this angel and they were afraid. It says they became what? Like dead men, right? Instead of going and being said, they go and they tell the Jewish leaders, hey, the, the tomb's empty. We're in trouble. And the Jewish leaders say, hey, we'll take care of it. We'll give you some money. Just say they came to steal the body. And we'll take care of it. But here's the point to note. Those Gentile soldiers knew the tomb was empty. Those Jewish leaders who paid, they knew the tomb was empty. Because if they could have found the body, they would have found the body. What did they do with the empty tomb? <laughs> Man, they ignored it, right? They, they tried to cover it up. And so let me ask you, there's a couple of responses people would have to the empty tomb. Number one, people may be ignorant of the empty tomb, but none of you can say that here today in the hearing of my voice. Because you've heard the scripture read, and I've talked about it, that the tomb is empty. So you can't be ignorant about the fact that the tomb is empty. And there may be people who ignore it. So, well, yeah, I know maybe there's some stories about that, but I'm not going to be bothered by that. I'm just going to ignore it. It may be true, but, but what, it doesn't matter to me. Some people may be indifferent to it, right? Yeah, big deal. So what? Okay, if it was empty. And you know, I'm fortunate that's how a lot of Christians live each and every day. To the, they're just indifferent to the gospel. And how do you know? How many people tell others about Jesus? If, if, if it's something you're interested in, guess what? You're going to tell people about it. And if you're not telling others about this good news, doing what the angel told the women to do, what Jesus told the women to do, go and tell? Are you just being indifferent to the gospel? Are you being interested? Maybe you're hearing this, some of this for the first time. You just always thought, well, I just like going to church because it makes me feel good, but wait a minute, it's, it's about the gospel? It, it's about Jesus is alive? I want to know more about this. And maybe you've known Jesus for a long time and, and you've just kind of grown cold. Maybe hearing about this is just reviving you to say, Man, I want to know, what did Jesus really do for me? Man, I want others to hear this. I want to know more. They may be interested. But I hope you're more than just interested in the empty tomb. I hope that you are invested in it. That you are counting your life upon that empty tomb. That is what makes the difference. That is what gives us hope in a time of hopelessness. That's what gives us encouragement because of what Christ has done. And so I encourage you, I implore you, invest your life in the gospel of Jesus. Invest your life because the tomb is empty. 
And I rejoice in that. I rejoice in that. And I hope that you do as well. So again, I know this isn't the ideal circumstances for an Easter Sunday, but I am so grateful y'all have been able to come out here and to enjoy this. And so I'm just going to close in a prayer. Then I got a couple of instructions for you at the end, okay? So let's close this time in prayer. And then we'll, again, got a few instructions for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, and, and praise you for Easter Sunday. Again, thank you for these faithful ones who've come out today. And Lord, I just pray that you would encourage them and bless them this day. Again, we can't do our normal activities, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it'll teach us to reflect upon what has been done on our behalf. Father, may we be more than just uh, interested in the empty tomb. May we be truly invested. And Lord, if there's anyone that's never trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior, may today be the day of that salvation, where they say, I know I'm a sinner, and my sin has separated me from you, God. But I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose again the third day. And because he did, I can have forgiveness. So I turn from my sin, and I turn to Jesus Christ. And Lord, if that is someone's desire, may they just know of their cleansing and forgiveness that comes through Jesus. So Lord, we praise you. Lord, we love you. Just pray this in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen. Okay. All right, so here's the instructions. On, the, on your way out, uh, we are going to give an offering, okay? Hopefully, if you brought an offering, if you weren't here last week, they'll be standing there with the bucket. I'm not a bucket. I've got a box. Do not touch the, uh, the box, okay? Just drop it in. And if it misses, we'll pick it up later, okay? But just, just do that. We want to be as safe as possible. I want to thank Roy and Pete for being out here. Follow their instructions, okay? Follow their instructions uh, when they'll be leading you out of here. Continue to tune in to Facebook Live, to the website. We're trying to keep things updated. Obviously, things are changing quickly with different regulations and all those kinds of things. Uh, we are not doing drive-in church next Sunday. We'll probably look at doing one in May, okay? So we'll be trying to keep this online, though, for the time being. But again, I am so grateful that you guys are here. Okay, now this is what I know you're waiting on, all right? What, I, yeah, wait, wait, what I'm going to say, I mean, we'll probably get in trouble for this, but hey, we'll, what is it, ask, easier to ask for forgiveness than permission or something like that. But anyway, well, I'm going to say Christ is risen. And then when I say that, your response is supposed to be, he is risen indeed. Since I can't hear you, if you believe that Christ is risen, I want you to honk your horn, okay? So I'm going to do it twice. So pay attention, okay? All right, he is risen. He is risen. God bless you guys. Y'all take care.